Welcome back, KetoCon. All right, that's lame. Welcome back. There you go. So the next speaker is someone who is well known. If you listen to podcasts, how many listen to the Keto Diet podcast with Leanne Vogel? Okay, that's pathetic. How many listen to Leanne Vogel? How many want to hear Leanne Vogel right now? Your wish is my command, Leanne Vogel. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> hey, guys. Oh, my gosh, I'm so pumped to be here. Thanks for having me. Um, so as Jimmy said, my name is Leanne Vogel. I write over at healthfulpursuit.com. Whoa, those slides are getting away on me already. I'm a nutrition educator. I graduated nutrition 10 years ago. I started a YouTube channel. I got a podcast. I got 12 digital pro programs. I got all sorts of things online. And I recently wrote a book called The Keto Diet. I know, crazy that nobody had had that title of a book yet, so I grabbed that. Um, and today I'm here to chat with you about personalizing your ketogenic diet. So I found keto like many of us did. Um, I was struggling. I didn't know what to do. I was paleo, I was vegan, I did the raw thing, I did the juicing thing, I did cleansing. And after six years of not having a period, <laughs> I was in my mid-20s, I was getting married, it was a struggle, and my hormones were offline, and it was just, it was hard for me. I went on hormone replacement therapy, I started gaining all this weight, and then my naturopath said, well, have you heard of a low-carb diet? And I said, well, no, that's really unsafe, I'm not going there. Thank goodness, Jimmy Moore had just come out with his book, Keto Clarity. I read that, I got convinced, I started doing the keto thing, and I experienced mega results. I lost 20 pounds of hormone weight gain, 12% body fat. I balanced my mood. I went off my ADHD medication. And we're talking about in 60 days, like it happened so fast. I was convinced. And you might have a very similar ketogenic experience. But, you know, things were going along. I was getting my six pack abs. I was looking really good. I was feeling pretty good. But at around the five month mark, something weird started happening. I started losing a lot of hair, like a lot, a lot of hair. It was ongoing for three months. I was starting to feel like maybe I would wake up one morning and look like Captain Luke Picard. Like it was that scary. And I have a lot of hair. <laughs> energy lulls, so I would be walking back and forth, working on something and get really tired. Um, I was an athlete, a triathlete, so this was weird for me. I was taking all the electrolytes, I was doing everything right. I was having heart, heart palpitations, weakness, um, bloating, acne, obsessing over my next meal to the point where I would watch people eat and I could smell it, I could taste it in my mouth, I was counting everything. And I started isolating myself from my friends. We would go out, to eat and I wouldn't eat or I would just say no I'll meet you later and then not go because I was ashamed of not eating around my friends or feeling obsessed that I couldn't have the foods that they were eating and this really required a shift because on one hand I had gotten off my off my ADHD medication my mood was better um, I was finally able to apply my brain for the first time ever if anyone has ADHD you know how frustrating it can be to know that there's a brain there, but you just can't access it. And I was looking really good. I looked great in a bathing suit. Everyone said, oh my gosh, you look so healthy and put together. But on the inside, I was struggling. And this re really required me to either get off the diet, and many people do. We, we eat keto, something doesn't work, and then we're like, screw it, and we binge on pizza and beer and cherry turnovers for like three months. And so I didn't want to go that path. I knew there had to be a different way. And it required a shift to kind of adjust things. So once I made that shift, and we're going to go through what that means and what that could mean for you, if you're struggling with some certain aspect of keto and you, haven't, you don't really feel like you have it quite right yet, now I've released that obsession with food. I go out for dinner with friends. I don't stress about it. I don't count my macros. I don't test my ketones. And I've been successfully in ketosis for three years. When I blow into those breath things or do those certain things on the off chance, it's always a good number. I just try not to get obsessed with that game because for me, it is a game and it becomes an obsessive game. I've boosted my energy. I've healed my hormone imbalance. So once I made that shift from that standard ketogenic protocol 
over to adjusting a couple of things for me. I got my period back and no doctor. I went to nine different specialists in four different provinces. I'm from Canada. Our provinces are much larger and it's a lot of driving to get to a specialist. And everyone said I wouldn't get my period back, I would never ovulate, and I'm doing all those things on a ketogenic diet. It may just not look 100% like a regular ketogenic diet. So some of the things that you might want to look at when it comes to your ketogenic diet options. And yes, there are actually options. And that's not to say like, if a ketogenic diet is working awesome for you and you feel fantastic, then why adjust something? But if there's just something that's just a little bit off and you know that you can feel better, maybe you're not happy or you're just not feeling well or you wish that there were things that you could change on the diet, but you know the rules say that you can't. I'm a rebel, so I love breaking the rules. And if you miss carbs and as a result you're binging like crazy, like once a month you're pounding down the carbs, you get off the diet for four days, and then you have to get back on the wagon, that is not normal. That is not normal behavior, and it's actually not serving you mentally or emotionally at all. So like I said, if what you're doing isn't working, you owe yourself to change. And if it is working, then 100% stay where you are because you've found something that works. So let's just go through a little bit about the standard ketogenic approach versus what I now call the fat-fueled approach. And really the main differences between the standard ketogenic approach and the approach that I use to regulate my hormones and continue to live a healthful ketogenic life is that I cut out the dairy completely. Uh, the quality of the ingredients that I use and I surround myself with are higher quality, whereas before it was only like, if it fits my macros, I'll eat it. Now it's like, does this serve my body and my purpose and is it gonna heal my body further? Another piece is whole food consumption, my relationship with macros, so I no longer get too obsessed about what that looks like, and it's totally possible to do it without all of the counting that may come with it. And if the counting works great for you, if you're an athlete or you just love counting and you don't get obsessed with it, I'm so jealous. But if you're the type of person that's like in their pantry hiding with your MyFitnessPal and you're like, how much celery can I eat tonight? <laughs> Instead of interacting with your family, it could become a problem. And we're gonna talk about carbohydrates on a ketogenic diet. So please don't squirt MCT oil at me or like get angry. <laughs> please, please don't. Um, so it's not just about the calories. And I think we all know this, especially when we're eating keto, things work a little bit differently. You know, we're looking at our overall well-being. We're looking at the people that we surround ourselves with, our genes. I met a lady yesterday in our Dallas event, and she was saying when she got her DNA tested and she was really into it, that her body says she does really well with fat, but her husband does really well with carbs. So you also need to pay attention to that as well as your body type. Like I know if I want to be a size zero, like this hip has to be cut off. Like there's no, there's no space. Like the hips are right there, right? So we also need to pay attention to the type of body that we have, the food quality, when we eat our food, who we surround ourselves with when we are eating. And part of the customization, or customization rather, comes with something I like to call carb ups. And you guys might have heard it as cyclical ketogenic diet. Um, and there was actually somebody that came by the booth recently and asked, okay, so like carb ups, I'm eating pizza and beer and chicken wings or like what is this? No, so a carb up on a ketogenic diet kind of looks like this. You eat keto all the time. And then maybe there's one night where you really feel like a sweet potato, a plantain, maybe some white rice, like paleo friendly things, and you just take out some of the fat from your ketogenic meal and put in those carbs. I'm not talking about pounding the carbs and eating all the sugar. And these healthy carbohydrates, I know I'm on a keto con stage saying carbohydrates are healthy, I'm bleh, but they can be very helpful for a lot of people and not so helpful for a lot of other people on a ketogenic diet. So what a carb up is, is reduction of fat in your evening meal while putting in carbs. And what it's not is an all out binge fast. Who this is not good for, diabetics, 
athletes, mostly aerobic type of athletes, carbohydrate sensitive individuals, and anyone enjoying keto and thriving just the way that they are. So a lot, a lot of people ask me, well, the mega question is, well, don't you get kicked out of ketosis when you have a little bit of carbs in the evening? But we all know that to get from a carbohydrate-fueled state over here to a ketogenic state is kind of hard. Like we have um, the keto flu and we're dealing with all those things and it's kind of like moving over to this side. But once we get here, we can actually jump over to burning carbs quickly and go back over to ketosis quite effortlessly. Where the problem lies is if we go on those binge fests for two weeks, I mean, you're kind of starting back at square one. But once those enzymatic processes are built up, it's quite easy for us to jump back and forth as long as we're not eating too many carbohydrates. And why you may want to do this is because when we're eating carbs in the evening, we're avoiding the brain fog, we're also allowing us to like live. I mean, there's certain cir circumstances where I go out with girlfriends and I end up having some sweet potato fries with my bunless burger. <gasps> oh my gosh, right? But when you've been ketogenic for a really long time, you burn those carbs, you get back, life goes on, and you had a really nice time with your girlfriends. And that's kind of my approach has always been of personalizing it to the point where I can actually do this long term and I can cash in on all of the benefits of a ketogenic diet without feeling completely completely crazy. And it does some really cool things. When we put the carbs in, take the fats out of one meal a week, and we're not talking about a ton of carbohydrates here, we can accelerate our fat loss. Um, if you guys are familiar with the concept of whoosh, yeah, maybe, um, where our fat cells will start holding a lot of water and then all of a sudden whoosh, all that fat will go away um, when we're sleeping and we wake up and we're 15 pounds lighter. That whoosh can be caused by a carb up. So a lot of times when people are stuck at a plateau and a plateau and a plateau and they're like, why? I've been eating keto for eight weeks and nothing's happening. A carb up can boost up our fluids enough that those fat cells whoosh. And the next day we're down quite a considerable amount of weight. It also does a really interesting thing with resetting leptin. I'm sure all of you are pretty familiar with leptin, but leptin is our satiating hormone. And I know that I need a carb up, which is usually, usually once a week in the form of a sweet potato, um, sometimes even half a sweet potato or an apple, um, is that I wake up every morning three nights or three mornings in a row where I'm hungry and a fatty coffee doesn't do it and bacon doesn't do it. I just need food. And that's a really good sign to me that I actually need a carb up. So it can help reset leptin. So when you do a carb up, it's pretty interesting. You have those carbs at night, you wake up in the morning and all of a sudden you're not hungry in the morning and you can fast for longer periods of time. It can also help increase your insulin sensitivity, increase your tryptophan uptake. So if you're one of those people like I was who couldn't sleep after a long time of eating ketogenic, I had insomnia for six days watching Battlestar Galactica back to back to back, you can avoid that by having these carb ups. So we already kind of chatted about, you know, I like to do the jumping around and I'm quite an animated person, <laughs> but we're switching, when we switch over to ketosis, we have this magic ability um, to go back and forth. And that back and forth is going to be different depending on the type of person that you are. Um, if, like I said, if you're more insulin sensitive, you might not want to do this. But if you're just a regular Jane, Joe, Billy Bob person who is using the ketogenic diet to feel better and you're just not feeling optimal, a carb up can be a great way to boost that. In addition to checking out your dairy, see if you're sensitive to nuts or seeds, um, and if carb ups don't really do it for you, you can also do the exact same thing with protein. I've never resonated with the protein thing, but when I do a lot of book events, um, a lot of people come up to me and say, oh my gosh, I'm so happy you said that once a week I can just eat more protein and they feel better. So these are some examples of what I would eat on a daily basis. Whereas when I was doing the standard ketogenic approach, there was a lot of not green things because I was just very, very, very strict with the amount of carbs. And, you know, eating 20 grams of carbs a day, I wasn't eating a lot of greens and I started to just not feel well at all. So let's go through a little bit about the different paths you can take on a ketogenic diet if what you're doing just doesn't feel right. So I've broken it up into three different paths and we kind of talked about it overall. The first path is 
low carb, high fat. Very similar to probably what a lot of you are doing right now. The only difference is that we're looking at whether or not dairy is a sensitivity for you. Maybe nuts, maybe seeds. Boosting up our whole foods. Um, so maybe kind of ditching the things that have like aspartame and are sweetened with funky stuff and, you know, those filler things. Um, and then there's path two. And this will include more protein. And this can be really good for the fat adapted individual who are maybe experiencing blood sugar irregularities or cortisol imbalances with the regular approach. A lot of people say that their cortisol does really funky things when they're on the standard approach and by just boosting up protein, even by 10 grams can make a huge difference. And then there's path three, and this path includes a couple of different strategies that we can use depending on the type of health imbalances that you have. So this includes carb ups, and this is really great if the standard approach doesn't suit you. So here's like a really big thing that's in my book. I have it over there if you kind of want to see it and take a picture of it at my booth. I'm at 232, just the second row. Um, and it kind of just goes through the different macros and tips that you can use depending on the type of person that you are. Because if you have thyroid anything, thyroid imbalance, your keto is going to be different than somebody who is an athlete with an awesome thyroid, which is going to be different than a keto with a person who has autoimmunity or adrenal dysfunction. It has to be different because our bodies need different things. So in my book, The Keto Diet, and very thoroughly in my program, my digital program, Fat Fueled, I go through, you know, if you have PCOS, which approach might be best for you, or if you have um, hypothyroid, or does eating paleo-friendly carbs make you feel weird? You know, if carbs make you feel weird all the time, probably don't do a carb up, because that won't make you feel good. So we'll go through really quickly about how to customize this, giving a couple of examples. If you're feeling like a completely hot mess, you may need to customize your approach further than, I'll just have carbs once a week, or I'll increase my protein, or maybe I'll look at dairy, or maybe I'll boost my whole food intake. You might be craving things, you might be thinking you could change things, but you're not sure. So my suggestion to you is instead of thinking like, oh my gosh, everything is broken, broken, I need to fix it all in one go, kind of break it up. And that's what I've always found with my own health. I'm a problem child. I have so many health problems. It's unbelievable. So instead of, you know, looking at the big picture, I look at the thing that's bothering me the most. And when I found keto, it was my hormones. I wanted to get my hormones back online. And so for you, you know, looking at boosting your food quality and then looking at removing negative foods. So we chatted about dairy and nuts and seeds and those impacts that it may have on you, as well as adding positive lifestyle factors. A lot of times we don't completely understand that when we are stressed, we will not be in ketosis. It's, it's amazing how quickly it can happen. You know, if you're in a stressful situation, all of a sudden you just don't feel right and your ketones go from like 2.8 to 0 0.5 in the matter of seconds. It's pretty interesting. And I'll just run through these slides really quickly because I only got two minutes left and I want to make sure that I answer some of your questions if you do have them. But here's an example of somebody that may have autoimmunity and how they might want to approach the ketogenic diet a little bit differently or, you know, boost a couple of nutrients or things in order to support their condition. So some things that you want, might want to look at are improving your sleep, incorporating some sort of movement that's like outdoor walks, gentle swimming, uh, nutrient density, um, soft, well-cooked foods, fermented foods are also important, while saying no to like the refined oils. So your go-tos are gonna be avocado, coconut, um, and any of those things are not like sesame seed oil is actually really inflammatory. Um, so those little things and, and educating yourself on which oils to choose can make a big difference. FODMAPs and nightshade foods, while some of them are ketogenic, might not be best for you. And mega exercise where you're really, really pushing all the time might not also be so good. And then you have nutrients to support. So focusing in on foods that you know will make you feel better that are also ketogenic. I mean, 
It's, it's pretty simple stuff, but when you have a list of all the things that you know will support you nutritionally, and just going for those, it can make a huge impact on how you're feeling overall. And the same thing goes with gut health. And gut health is interesting. It's, it's one of the last pieces I find when you're healing your body of being able to um, kind of get over that last hump, but it's also the most challenging to balance out. So here are some items that you want to you might want to say yes to, as well as no food like gut irritants, smoking alcohol, even caffeine or chocolate, which can be prevalent on a ketogenic diet. And then again, the nutrients to support. So these are just some examples of how um, you can adjust things. And here's the book where some of that information is at, as well as um, where you can find me on social. So I'd love to cut over to questions, answer you some questions about what I just chatted about, or maybe you have some questions about whether or not you have my book and you just have some things that you want to go through with me. So let's do it. Yeah. Whew. That was very quick, right? Oh my gosh. So there's a microphone right in here. Don't be scared. Awesome. So in the carb up practice, yes. is it important to choose carbs that don't spike your blood sugar? My favorite carb is cassava, but my blood sugar spikes to 190 an hour afterwards. Or because it's happening so infrequently, is that not important? Yeah, so because it's happening infrequently, you don't have to worry about it too much unless your goal is like, blood sugar re regulation all the time and you're super sensitive to carbohydrates like if you're insulin resistant I wouldn't do it but if you are not so much worried about that but just geeking out about the numbers I don't think that you need to be too concerned about it so what should happen is you know you burn through those carbs you jump back into the ketosis your numbers should be pretty good and it also can mitigate the effects of physiological insulin resistance so you may find the next morning your blood sugar is actually lower than it has been in quite a long time so it almost like can reset that in a lot of people as well but that's a very good question yeah I had lots of bacon I won't bite I had so much bacon this morning it was like I always forget that I'm in the US and when I order two sides of bacon there's like a plate this big and I'm like <laughs> okay this is awesome <laughs> come on down Hey. Hey. So um, I really don't have a question, but it, just what I wanted to speak to is what you've shared with us is um, a little bit of my experience from what I've learned from you. So I was on a ketogenic protocol primarily to try to see if it would help with my ADD while I was in school. And what I noticed was that I couldn't lift as much and mm -hmm. it would take me days and days to recover from a workout. And once I started implementing the carb ups, and I'm talking about just like a quarter of a sweet yeah, potato. Yeah, it's not much. In the evening, and maybe a quarter of a sweet potato right after a workout, I could lift my normal weights, and I recovered like in a day or two, and the soreness was not anywhere near what it was when I was full keto. So thank you for that. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much for sharing your experience. That's awesome. Okay, we have time for a really quick question. If anyone has anything else, and you want to like run to the mic, do an Elvis and ask me a question. Okay, I will be over in my booth if you have more of a personal question or you want to pick my brain, totally cool with it. And yeah, thanks so much for having me, guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah, take care. Thank you.